So that's all, those payments are all made, I mean, in, in this proposed budget. Yes. Now in the teeter plan, it should be, as I said, 5.1 million that is going towards that. And that represents both the revenues and the scheduled payment. And at the time I figured this out, I put 2.4, but it's between 2.3 and 2.4 is what is being diverted from teeter to help balance the budget. So you have to subtract that out. So the total that we're paying on debts and liabilities in this budget is 9.7 million. And that, if you, if you have to look at somewhere in the budget where there is a gap between what we would like the budget to be balanced at and where it is, it's that number, which is why it's in red. Supervisor Smith. Thank you. So I have two questions, Ms. Okay. Classy. Um, the for the eight hundred thousand dollar figure, the underfunded, does that are you addressing here the board's decision to close the gap on the ten percent that is unfunded? No. Where is that? Oh, th that is not here. And where is it? It is included in the retirement contributions. I just haven't broken it out okay. here. Okay. But, but it is in the retirement contributions okay. that were spread yes. to all the departments. And you had asked about that before, and we were all trying to rack our brains what it was that you had wanted. I will get you that number. And so we went, th we did yes. go through that at the workshop, and Ms. Wyatt pointed out, and that, and she was correct in that uh, it would be reflected as the actuarial report demonstrated. Mm -hmm. A change in the um, the only accurate way to do it mm -hmm. would be to put it in in the funding ratio or the funding right. contribution for the employer share, right? Which is sent out to the departments, so right? And it, it, so it is budgeted. Yeah. So it's. In I there. simply didn't break it out here. So, so. it wasn't that figure around four hundred thousand. That's my memory. Yeah. So where is just? I'm just interested. Where where is that four hundred thousand dollar amount reflected in? the budget is it reflected in that 800,000 no 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 if I were to do it and I could do it right now if you wanted I would add another line that okay. said 400,000 and then your total at the bottom would be 10.1 uh, yeah 10.1 but somewhere million. in here it's budgeted for it's it is budgeted as part of the retirement contributions okay. from all of the departments because it's not broken out as a separate amount it just changes our overall right number. and so, actually yeah, that's true of the POBs and the underfunded POB debt. You will not find that in the budget. It wasn't on your spreadsheet. It is in those retirement contributions. Okay. Yeah, okay, understood. So my second question is to to this this ongoing scenario of the teeter plan, and I think that we clearly can see that we're we're doing in essence what we have done in the past, which is using the teeter to balance the budget, the teeter revenue. Um, so given that this is a very difficult budgetary year, I can see why you've come up with this as, an, as a budget balancing strategy to the tune of, of 2.4 million. But what, I think that we, we, our accountability is such that we need to hear from the executive office. In other words, this is your budget balancing strategy you've come up with this where what are the what are the long-term view, view what's the long-term view here I mean what if we're stepping aside again for another year to the tune of 2.4 million I mean what what is the scenario for next year that's going to lead us down a path that that we expect things to be different because I haven't heard any indicators that they will I've right. heard, only heard indicators that we're going to see more of the same with respect to uh, economic forecasts, the national picture, the state picture. So I'm just wanting to know some of your behind the scenes thinking, and if you were the CEO would like to comment on why this amount, why now, what, what, how do we plan to have it be any different in the future? Because if it, if it doesn't turn around, it doesn't turn around. Right. It's the same issue with the unpaid part of the county's um, liability to the retirement system. Mm -hmm. If you don't step in, and I'm glad mm -hmm. we have, and I'm glad that it's clearly reflected in what we are doing uh, with respect to the repayment of that 10% that was heretofore off the table. So we're stepping up to that one, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that that's, that's good, because we need to do that. We need to become 100% funded at some point, yes. or the retirement system won't cover 
uh, its obligations to the employees, but it's not really the entire retirement system, it's the county. Right. Because it's the county share that is, that is, uh, has been deferred. Mm -hmm. So a, a similar scenario, though, unfolds here with respect mm -hmm. to Teeter. So 2.4 million is a lot of money. So what are, what are, what's the thinking, what's the strategy, what's the path in the road that we're gonna see mm -hmm. that's gonna change? Okay, and I'm going to get to that as we talk about balancing the budget. But I would say one thing that will change is that uh, the $800,000 for the underfunded uh, POB debt, this is the last year that we're paying that. that. This is actually one where we get to burn the mortgage or whatever. And so... What's the date on that? Can we... Well, it's, it's, it's not... I think it's this fiscal year. So it'd be June 30th, 2009. And so that is one change that we know one of our debts is kind of dropping off the table and, and that will assist. It's only one piece of it. I think the rest of it, which I'll get into with the bouncing discussion, is where you have to look at things that impact staff. And that's, in terms of the discussions kind of behind the scenes, we are very aware that right now we're in proposed budget as opposed to final budget. And we're very aware that we're in a situation where it's very fluid and, you know, numbers are changing from the state and everything else. So we did not feel comfortable pursuing a, a balancing strategy that would have a significant impact on staff with what are essentially proposed or pre preliminary numbers. The feeling is that we need to get to the final budget and the final numbers to know whether they're even bigger. You know, there's a bigger gap because depending on what the state does in the next couple of months, we could be facing things that we don't have in the budget right now. Or whether it's a smaller gap because we end up with more fund balance carryover than we anticipated and maybe the state comes through for something that, that uh, you know, right now we've cut out of the budget. So part of the thinking here is this is not something we want to do in the proposed budget and therefore on a temporary basis we put this together we wanted to show you what the size of the gap was at this point in time and then we will have the next couple of months to really hear what's happening with the state and to pursue discussions that we may need to have with with the uh, county's unions Supervisor Pinches. Just to comment, most counties don't fund their unfunded liability in their retirement system. If we didn't do that, we'd have $5.3 million this year available to either pay down or pay off the teeter. You know, that's the conservative and the prudent way to do business. But, uh, you know, I think our budgeting in the last few years has been uh, real conservative. We've been trying to keep all of our uh, actuarials, whether it's health insurance or pension up, up to date, you know, but it, it does penalize us as far as having working capital to do new things. Uh, I don't really believe that we're letting things build up to that great idea. Basically, the teeter plan is the only issue in County Mendocino that needs to be, that we've kind of let build up a little bit. Other, all of our other actuarials and everything, we've not only either paid them off or pay them down or putting the money aside. So uh, this teeter issue doesn't really 